Dear viewers, we are back from this report on the Indian Embassy's event. It was definitely a really great one. And we have been joined by our first guest for this evening, the psychologist Mohammed Darwish. Good evening, Mohammed, and how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm glad you're here with us this evening. We're going to be talking about PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, right. which I think most of us have at least heard of at least once, uh, maybe while watching TV or movies. But what is the actual meaning of PTSD? So yeah, when, when it comes to define like PTSD, PTSD is an, an anxiety disorder that people get through or by seeing or living through Mm -hmm. a dangerous event yes you know so it's very natural to be afraid when in danger but in btsd the reaction of fear is kind of changed or damaged yes so people can have these frightening thoughts and stressed even when they are no longer in danger right so it's something that does stay with them after the events that they have exactly uh, encountered. It's, it works more with the neurotransmitters in the brain and the amygdala that are responsible for stress yes. and traumas, you know? For sure. And usually, I, I mentioned previously that we've heard about PTSD mostly from movies and film and series because it's always attached to soldiers because they definitely go through a lot of traumatic experiences, uh, of course, at work. But who gets PTSD? Is it only soldiers, war veterans, or could it be anyone on the street? Anyone can get PTSD, including soldiers, war veterans or people or survivors from like physical assaults abuse accidents mm -hmm. disasters yes you know also like people with ptsd not necessarily have been in a dangerous situation you can have ptsd if one of your family member or a yes. friend you know have been has been like in a dangerous situation or a harmful event mm -hmm. you know yes so even just hearing about it from someone could really tap into our fears Exactly. Okay. So uh, what are the symptoms of PTSD that usually, you know, help a doctor diagnose? So according to many research now, like PTSD, symptoms are grouped into three categories. Mm -hmm. F first category is re-experiencing symptoms, and that's our like flashbacks with elevated heart rate and perspiration mm -hmm. and nightmares, frightening thoughts. Yes. Second classification or category is mm -hmm. like avoidance symptoms you'll notice that the person is avoiding places, events, objects that are all reminders of the events. And you'll find the person feeling n emotionally numb. Yes. You know, or mm -hmm. like you'll see a lot of people lost their interests mm -hmm. and in activities that were very enjoyable. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I can imagine. The third one is the hyper arousal symptoms and that can be like they can be easily straddled, you know, mm -hmm. and also they can have like angry anger outburst, you know. Yes. Yeah, these are mm -hmm. the like let's say three categories of the PTSD symptoms. You mm -hmm. know, it's a lot of symptoms, but they have like each symptom, each three or four symptoms, you know, mm -hmm. are categorized under one category, you know. Definitely. And can we say that every PTSD patient uh, actually deals with all three categories of symptoms or does it differ from patient to another? So here it comes how to diagnose, you know, PTSD. Yes. And it's, it's actually diagnosed by a psychiatrist or a psychologist and mm -hmm. at least you should have like the following symptoms I'm going to mention right now. You have you should have at least one from like they should last for a month each of these symptoms that right. I'm gonna mention. So let's say the re-experiencing symptoms. You should have like mm -hmm. one from re-experiencing -ex symptoms that last for a month. And you should have like two from the avoidance symptoms. And mm -hmm. you should have like three from the hyper arousal symptoms mm -hmm. for at least a month. If all of these like indicate in your diagnosis yeah, we c like uh, psychologists, you know, and psychiatrists yes. can mm -hmm. legally diagnose you with PTSD, you know. Right. It's about like fight and flight response. It's a very healthy mm -hmm. hormone in the body, you know, yes. in each human's body. But when it w it's damaged or like kind of changed in the mm -hmm. way how it works, it's going to be PTSD. 
For sure. And how long does it usually take for a patient to actually know that there's something wrong and go to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist? Is it like we can say right after the events they've experienced or is it usually after years and years? Actually, after like three months, they mm -hmm. can figure out that or after one month, you know? Yes. Because let's say you have a trauma that day, mm -hmm. then it will last for two weeks and everything is gone later. Right. You know? That means acute stress disorder, mm -hmm. you know, it's just temporarily, but once it's disappeared, like, that's fine. Yes. Uh, if it does persist, you know, and continues, that means PTSD. Definitely. You know? So yeah, it takes people like three months or one month, like from one month to three months, I would say, mm -hmm. to know that they are going through PTSD. Definitely. And what about treatment when it comes to PTSD? With a lot of mental illnesses, uh, some of them there's medication that you have to stay on exactly. till further notice, yeah. and others it's just medication for a while plus doctor visits. How does it work for that one? So, the most effective way in research is like both medications and like cognitive therapy. Mm -hmm. So, one of the therapy is CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. It's like you help people to change their cognitive patterns mm -hmm. or the way of thinking that they have, you know, toward their traumas. Yes. Also, there is another medication called ozonetin. Mm -hmm. It works for like it's it was used for people with schizophrenia, but it was it wasn't effective, but it was valid when mm -hmm. they used it on a, one research on mice. They found that this medicine can block the like cells that consolidate the traumas, you know. Yes. So if both are used through mm -hmm. prescription, that can be very helpful. Right. And uh, usually can patients actually get 100% uh, treated when it comes to PTSD or is it something they're going to have to be fighting uh, for the rest of their lives on and off? Uh, it depends usually with like with all psychological and mental health illnesses, you know. Mm -hmm. All of them, you will try to do a diet from it. It's like cold and flu, like yes. people or doctors cannot guarantee like you will not have it at all. They will be like, do mm -hmm. these steps and you will avoid it. But there is yes. a likelihood it will come again, you know. Right. Yeah. There but recovery, yeah, it usually, it happens with like one month to three months. It depends to the person and how they interact with their environment and their mm -hmm. medication, you know. Yes, that's actually great, one to three months. So some patients could get really lucky with recovering from exactly. PTSD. Exactly. It took people sometimes like six months, one year. Mm -hmm. But like, it depends, you know, okay. usually it depends. Definitely, always differs from a patient to another. But I want to talk about, um, you mentioned that sometimes certain events such as uh, disasters or something bad happening to a group of people. Yeah. A lot of these things happen. But why do some people leave these events with PTSD and then others don't? Is it normal that so, uh, we react differently? Yeah, because first, like, when it comes to taking this, the causes, perception, mm -hmm. and mental health, there is a model that's called, like, the biopsychosocial mo model. Yes. And it takes the idea the biological idea, your social idea, and your psychological health, you know. So when all of them are like integrated together, you know, people differ and vary one from another. Mm -hmm. So there are two factors. One are resilience factor, mm -hmm. the others are risk factors to have yes. to develop PTSD. Let's talk with the risk factors mm -hmm. at first. So if you lack social group or support group, or lost home or job, you know? Yes. You are more likely to develop PTSD, but when it comes to resilience factors, if you can face, the, if you can be confident in the face of anger or danger, that's a very resilience factor mm -hmm. to face PTSD. Or if you have good, if you seek people and good seeking skills, let's say, mm -hmm. for help, you can really have a good resilience factor to not get PTSD. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the factors that people have in their life to develop yes. the PTSD or not, you know. Very interesting. So it definitely depends on the patient's uh, history and lifestyle, things they've been through exactly. and everything going the on in their lives. It's very important mm -hmm. for each patient.
Definitely. And what about children? Because usually just talking to PTSD patients, sometimes it's things that have happened with them from childhood. So uh, can actual children get PTSD? Actually, yeah, years of research suggest that children can get PTSD, which mm -hmm. is post-traumatic stress disorder. And children kind of differ from adults because like their memories of their trauma could like occur with no warning. Mm -hmm. And also you'll find like the kids have distressing thoughts, you know, and kids could have PTSD, not only by dangerous stuff, also by like separation, mm -hmm. sudden death. These all can change the way the amygdala and the nearest transmitters in the kids like brain, you know, Yes. to work effectively or, mm -hmm. you know, efficiently, you know. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's always different for kids. And uh, as you said, it's, it's very hard to deal with usually yeah, with exactly. the children. With kids, it's kind of very honest because like, you know, kids are very honest with their emotions. <laughs> right? Exactly. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. So uh, what about physical problems? When we talk about ment uh, mental illnesses, we usually focus on uh, maybe problems that are not physical. Can we see anything that is obvious physically with a PTSD patient? Yeah, actually some people will have increased blood pressure, mm -hmm. other will have nausea, and these like physical effects that happens to them or physical problems, you know, could be a reminder for their PTSD. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Like when it works with nausea, you know, once they have it, they know I'm having this PTSD, you know, yes. attack, let's say, you know. For sure. Um, I think nausea is associated with a lot of mental health uh, illnesses like anxiety, which completely makes sense. And it's very hard right. on the patient, too, because it becomes harder for them to eat and keep food in their system when uh, they are stressed in any way possible. But finally, do you have any final words or advice for anyone that um, might have uh, PTSD watching us? I would like to let them know that they are not the only ones who have it. Mm -hmm. There is a book called the DSM-5, the 5th edition, the DSM-5, you know? Yes. It could show you like there are many people from all countries, from all cultures, who are experiencing the same symptoms you are experiencing. So mm -hmm. don't be shy to come out and seek yes. help, you know? It's a very good resilience factor, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know? To like face the danger with confidence, you know? Yes. While you're being confident, I mean, mm -hmm. you know? So I would like to tell them, yeah, have the courage, seek help, and come out. Yeah, it's not a problem to say I have PTSD. I think that's the greatest advice, Mohammed. Whenever we talk about mental illness, we always uh, tell people, go and seek help. It's the best thing they can do. So thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dear viewers, we had with us the psychologist, Mohammed Derwish. And up next, we have a report. Let's view it, and we'll be right back.